Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And today we're going to be exploring a new angle of systems programming and that is using COBOL. Um, it may appear laughable at first uh, to say that uh, we're going to be using a, a language as, um, shall we call it, uh, old or shall we call it uh, convoluted, shall we call it um, shall we call it complicated uh, to use um, to use this language for systems programming uh, I guess we could uh, but I disagree um, there is some beauty to COBOL if you look at COBOL here such as this um, code that it shows here there's something beautiful about it um, it's it's English like and that was of course the the, the design goal to make it be as uh, similar to English as possible things like set address of two uh, here look at this set address of PSA to null uh, or display or uh, it, it just looks very English like so I kind of like it I like to uh, read COBOL um, language but I'm not very good at it I I never really did a lot of COBOL programming it just a little bit about 30 35 years ago but um, but uh, I've only really played with it here and there I've never written a, a big program in COBOL but I thought uh, why not since it is possible of course in the in the MVS and ZOS world to use COBOL for uh, systems programming um, I thought that's what we're gonna um, do today and what I wanted to do is again um, continue the Unix tradition of using progr simple programs uh, that do one thing um, we had in a previous video a Rex version as well as a an assembler version of a program that does who am I uh, which prints out the user that's currently logged in on the terminal um, that's uh, useful especially when you want to create chains of programs in either scripts or in, in, in also in, in full programs to uh, obtain information from one program pipe it to the next etc etc that is the unix way of doing things it's never really quite been the uh, mvs or mainframe wor way of doing things uh, maybe a little bit more in the in the vm world the zvm world but in the mvs world uh, you don't see that very often having one program little program that does one thing only does that thing and then having a different program that does a different thing and then chaining those programs together you don't see that much but um since i i see i come from more from a unix or or, or nowadays i guess linux world uh, that's what we're going to do so we're going to create the program that shows us the system id um, that's sometimes useful if you want to check what is the system id especially if you're in a clustered world if you're in a in a in a sysplex uh, sometimes it's useful to know which system you're currently running so um, that's why um, I'm connected to this uh, ZOS system here by the way everybody can now do the uh, IBM uh, master the mainframe contest I suggest you register with, with IBM to do it uh, then you get access to a ZOS instance. Um, so let's start working. Um, I'm, I have a JCL here already, which we used in the past for COBOL, and I'm going to use this one uh, access system ID. And we can always get the system ID from the S SMF control block, which is systems management facility. Uh, that's one of the classic ways to obtain the system ID because it needs to be present there obviously um, we're gonna call this uh, CVTX um, because we need to of course to go we need to go through the CVT we don't really need a, a SysN but I'll just leave it there just in case and uh, this should be fine already uh, what I was thinking is that um, that I will do this um, uh, like I've done uh, um, this in the previous ways which is I program it and I record it and then uh, I include it in the video in a, in a fast playback uh, method uh, so I'll accelerate it at 2.5x so it's not as boring seeing me typing in um, the the program and the, the clicking of the of the of my mechanic keyboard which is maybe a little bit annoying to some people and so um, that's uh, that's the way we're um, I'm going to do this uh, today again. So um, 
let me go here and uh, start and uh, I'll see you when I've have when I've typed in the program and we're ready to start debugging it Okay, so I think we have enough here to uh, give this a try. So what we're doing here, we start the normal uh, COBOL program and then I, we, as we do um, in, in a typical Unix fashion, where the return value here uh, is what I'm establishing here. So I'm, re I'm uh, passing return value uh, to the caller so this program could be called from some from any tool really within the system and it will return the system ID um, and uh, the display is purely for testing purposes um, um, I could of course also say uh, host name uh, SMC ACID 
but this wouldn't be the Unix way of doing things because if you call host name in, in Unix or Linux, it will just return the host name. It will not append or, or have in front any text. And so um, I want to do this in the traditional way. Although, of course, it's not often done. Things are done a little different in the mainframe world, but I think uh, it would be fun to do it this way uh, in, in, the, in the Unix way. Um, and so I, I pass back this return value um, to the caller. Um, but obviously, oh, I just spotted an error here. Um, using past linkage. Okay, so basically returning this. So that's the way to do this. Um, so then we uh, have the the CVT, which is of course at, uh, at the prefix save area, which it starts at zero and at 16 you have the pointer to the CVT, CVT at 196 you have the pointer to the SMF, to the SMCA table, which is the one we're looking at here. Uh, and then at offset 16, you'll find the system ID. Uh, with a length of four bytes that's really very simple then uh, in the procedure division we uh, set the address of the PSA uh, to zero and then the address of the CVT to this pointer here which is 16 bytes down and then um, and then 9 at 196 bytes down in CVT we find the SMF table in the SMF table we find the SMCA the system ID at offset 16 and then we move this to the to the return value we display just for testing purposes and we end the program so that's really it um, swap one Oop, we are one so we submit this one four five zero and it went well um, so swap three let's see what it says here Okay, so that's the COBOL program. It's a little bigger. Um, I have to admit, I don't really know most of the stuff that's going on here and that the COBOL compiler tells me. I mean, it's in a way, it's pretty, pretty obvious. Cross reference, yeah, these are the variables that we defined, pointers, etc. M means it was modified. CVTX, um, that's the C sect when it becomes a assembler. I wonder if we can also show the assembler code that the compiler generates. We'll get it in a second. Um, I'll try to do that in a second. Then. Uh, Memory map, okay. Data save area, variable portion of the DSA, so basically the stack. Processing options. Um, let's see how we can generate an assembler. I don't see. Oh, and here is the output. Sys1. Um, ZOS global generate assembler listing pseudo pseudo assembler listing uh, list okay let's see if we have that swap to yeah we don't have list so let's try to put in list and let's run it again one four five one Swap three. Oh, now this time it came back with a warning four. I guess it didn't like the list. So let's see what it says. No list. Uh, what is it complaining about? Return code four. High severities for warning, but where's the warning? So 
So uh, this went through, but why is it warning? Find warning. It didn't take the value that we put in, but swap to par xref list. Um, let's see what it says here. It says list. the IBM Knowledge Center is such a problem. Uh, list compiler option. I have it in there. Maybe one set at the beginning. Although I doubt it matters where we put it in. But let's try. One four five two, and same thing again. No joy. Uh, swap three. Yeah, exact same issue. Why is it not taking the list? I want to get to the ground of this. Invocation parameters. It says here. This goes to option conflict with vacation to precedence offset. Uh, okay, so I guess we go to two. Yeah, and we remove this because it's in conflict with the list option, apparently. Uh, let's run this again. Moshix 1453. And this time went through. Swap three. And let's go look at the assembler. That's where I feel more comfortable. Okay, so uh, let's do a write 12. Um, okay, so this is the dsect as we saw before. It literally takes the program name that you put in the program ID and uses that as the C sector. That's why it's important what you put in there, especially when you do um, use in the chat when you call assembler to COBOL and COBOL to assembler. So um, okay this is the CEE eye catcher. Uh, it's the uh, language environment uh, that um, ZOS uses that it's it's different than MVS. Um, but um, there is a calling convention and that's what it's establishing here. Okay, so here we enter the real program. Um, and okay, so then. Uh, well, here, that's the the very basic language uh, assembler notation uh, with register numbers without the R in front, so it becomes a little bit more difficult to read. Uh, but it's just going um, through. Now what it's doing here. This is all COBOL, COBOL compiler related stuff that's um, yeah I mean this notation is so difficult.
trying to look where it addresses the tables. We were terminating and going back, but mm. you know, I, I can't find it. I mean, I would have to sit down and give this proper register name so it becomes readable, but I mean. Um, that's just secondary to the purpose of this video. Uh, it clearly does work. Um, and uh, so that's it. Um, let's look at the program again. We enter, um, swing from table to pay table by setting the address of the pointers here, of, of the fields pointed to and then we move the value to the return value which we, we which we say here is this one displayed for for debugging purposes and end the program so it's as easy as it goes as you can see uh, this doesn't look unlike the rex program that i showed just uh, a couple of weeks ago maybe was it m68 maybe or 67 um, very similar uh, it's very very easy to uh, to extract system information, even in COBOL. Um, I would say it's probably easier in COBOL than PL1, uh, similar to Rex, and Assembler, of course, is a little bit more convoluted, but uh, equally interesting. So I hope you um, had fun uh, watching uh, COBOL being used for systems programming. We could expand this now uh, infinitely by adding more and more fields. We we could extract, um, but this is the Unix tradition to write one program that does one thing and that's it, uh, as, as free of bugs as possible, and uh, and that's what we did here. Uh, please uh, uh, do consider uh, joining the MVS in the cloud uh, version that I offer to everybody uh, by sending an email to the address uh, shown in M71. Um, and uh, with your real name, the purpose, and the logon, so just the logon ID and password. And then uh, you'll find this program there. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna copy right over now um, so that uh, you can play with this. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. And please do subscribe to the Mainframe channel if you haven't done so. Uh, if you like this video, press on the thumbs up button. I always like those. And have a nice summer. Bye.